How we doing? The folks hear me. We're going to get started. Welcome to Hip Hop Lit for Life. It is the live stream class. It's all about looking at life through the lens of hip hop. And we're focusing a lot this uh, term on writing and looking at the craft we're gonna look at uh, some j cole uh samples today got a joke for you it's a little bit of a thinker what do you call 50 cent after he gives his opinion about eminem that's this one's a thinker all right i appreciate you too Cyrell, hopefully I'm saying that right. Football Rapid, if you're still with us, I appreciate you being here. I'm gonna keep it moving, keep it going. Yeah, let's jump into it. I'm kind of excited today, and plus, today I'm gonna do something a little bit differently. All right, got my water. Uh, I'm going to there is a concept that I want us to explore, but more importantly, I want us to have some uh, practice of actually doing some analysis on the uh, rap lyrics. So, here's a joke. What do you call 50 Cent after he gives his opinion about Eminem? 48 cents. Do we get it? Do we get it? Hi, I'm glad you're still here. What do you think of that one? I like it. It's, it's a thinker, I don't, but thinking puns aren't necessarily aren't the ones that people gravitate to the most. Yeah, and there that one. I feel like that's. Do we get it? Do we get it? If we 
get it because it's a saying. It's one of these ones based on the sayings. So whenever you give your opinion, we have a saying of like, I'm gonna give my two cents. So 50 Cent gives his two cents about Eminem. He's only left with 48 cents. Yeah, it's all good. It's one of those ones because it's based on an idiom. You know, if you don't know the idiom, then you don't, you don't get it. It's a thinker. It's a thinker. All right. So let's, um, I got a question for you, though. What's a word or a phrase that should come back from the past or stay in the past? So I'm thinking like YOLO, for example. My students tell me it's in the past and a lot of them feel like it should stay in the past. What are some words and phrases that should uh, come back or stay in the past? Oh yeah, I just got one. Uh, Y'all know of Ice Cube, right? I think uh, Ice Cube saying should come back. I wanna hear more people going, yay, yay. That's what I wanna hear. should be uh, I'm trying to think of some other phrases word or phrase let me see let me see uh, I don't know I still say a lot of the things I used to say back in the day like chill Show still around, I think that. That's what's up. Do people say that? Like as a, you know, an affirmative? It's like, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, I think dope should, you know, stay around. Fresh, yes, of course. Dope and fresh should always Stay around and for show. <laughs> yes. And then I don't know about for shizzle. I don't know if you can really get away with saying for shizzle without it being like taken as a joke. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't think you can get away with that one. You can say it as a joke, but I don't think you'd be like, yeah, for shizzle, for shizzle. And have people not look side-eyed at you like what what you doing <laughs> um, no fish chisel is that right you say fish chisel all the time <laughs> it's part of the lingo okay all right Area slang. Keep it 100. Yeah. Or excuse me. It's not keep it 100. It's keep it 100. There's a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> uh, I've been finding myself saying this one, and this is a new one. Not gonna lie. That's a new one, man. Right? Of course, in the in the chat, it's NGL, but not gonna lie, like I've, I've been finding myself saying that more, and that's I've never really said that before. But I like it because it's the truth. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. 
ain't got a lot to kick it. <laughs> let's get it. Yeah. Oh, let's go. That is um one more in particular. Let's go. Right? Like that's <laughs> that's a big one. Take away no cap. All right, yeah. It, it might be. Yeah, it, it might be time for no cap to go. It's, it's it's wearing out of it. I've heard a lot of flips on it, and I'm thinking, yeah, it might be time to let it go. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, we're gonna get. Speaking of what's going, we're getting into it. We're gonna do some right like J Cole today. Uh, and there is a particular. Like I said, a particular technique that made me want to focus on J. Cole this week. Um, but he also does so many um, just dope things in his uh, writing that uh, I think can go, again, missed. And so I want us to take some time to focus on that. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to uh, focus on analysis today. And uh, hopefully y'all are ready to engage in the chat. Because I actually want to be more of like a note taker for what you observe in the lyrics and less of it you hearing from me because you know people can sit and like watch a, watch a class and hear the information and think they understand it but when it's time to actually apply it like they actually end up lost so we're gonna do some you know gonna make make your brain work a little bit so that way you uh you know, really start to see some of the techniques and then be able to take it yourself. So the tip, uh, suspend judgment to the best of your ability. So it's not really about, um, you know, whether it's good or not, or whether it's bad or not. Um, Cause that's all a really a matter of taste and personal preference, right? So to our best of our ability, we wanna kind of just hold our taste and personal preference kind of to the, to the side. And then really just look at what's there, what's there in the lyrics that um, we can, again, take for our craft. So in the previous classes, if you, you know, want to go and check those streams, um, you'll see that at some point I talk about like kind of the three um, ways that we look at analysis. And it's through three places. Like one is the workshop where it's the craft the libraries where we're kind of focusing on what things could mean and interpretation. And then the courtroom is where we're doing our, our value judgment, talking about what we enjoy and didn't enjoy, things like that. So, um, a big water bottle. All right, are we ready to get into it? Let me see one in the chat if you're ready, if you're ready to go to the boards. This one might be a quick one today. And I think I might have to sit down because it's hard to write on my screen and stand up. So let me uh, adjust some things. So one in the chat, if you're ready, do some right like J. Cole. As the saying goes, let's get it. <laughs> let's go. Getting hyped for some analysis, what? I really wish my classes could be more like sporting events. All right, to the board. So we cut this one out. Bam, all right. So we're looking at three samples today. Um, and you'll see my, uh, you'll see my edits and the lyrics just cause you know, I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> uh, cause I do use this in class, but it's, I'm taking the editing style of um, Saul Williams, and if you ever check out this book, it's a, his, I don't know if it's his first book of poetry, but it's called The Dead MC Scrolls. It's one of those books like I read, and I was like, oh, snap, he's writing the way like I think, and, and the way that he puts words together. Like it was the easiest thing for me to read, and I kind of have a undiagnosed uh, dyslexia, so I'm flipping words and skipping words all the time um, when I'm reading and writing. But when I read uh, Saul Williams' book of poetry, that was the one I was like, I can read this and I'm not messing up. But anyway, in the book, he, uh, for, for certain phrases and things, he kind of does the all caps, no vowels kind of censorship. 
which kind of draws more attention to it, but that's just our little secret. So we're looking at three uh, samples today. And let's see, let's see. So let's kind of take it one by one. Um, we're gonna start from something from Crooked Smile. All right, do we know that? Hopefully we know that song. Uh, the album escapes me that it was released on, but it's not its most current one. But from Crooked Smile, uh, they tell me I should fix my grill because I got money now. I ain't gonna sit around in front like I ain't thought about it. A perfect smile is more appealing, but it's funny how my ish is crooked. Look at how far I done got without it. And I'm not rapping in like J. Cole just for the sake of uh, not trying to do it a disservice. Though I could, I just don't want to rap it to this beat. Um, all right, so the question, so let's, I want to do this. I'm going to give, uh, let's put like three minutes on the clock starting now. And as you are looking at uh, these lyrics and kind of reading through them, right? Um, what do you notice, right? And you can start focusing on rhymes. If you know the song, you can even note where certain words land on the beat. But I would suggest probably focusing on rhymes uh, for the first part. But then anything else that you notice that I can like literally point to um, in the lyrics, go ahead and put that in the in the chat, and I'll just kind of take your notes as I see them come up. <laughs> All right, so we got about two more minutes. And if you are just coming to class, don't worry, you're not late. This is Hip Hop Live for Life. We look at life through the lens of sports literature. It's a real class that I actually teach in high school here in Portland, Oregon. And I just decided, hey, why don't I teach this online too? Because I love teaching so much. And uh, there's just a lot of benefits from it. So we're looking at the lyrics for J. Cole, seeing what we notice, seeing the rhymes that pop out. Any ideas, any connections between the words? An attempt to kind of see the patterns. Just over a minute remaining. Oh, we got the AAB rhyme. So I'll just kind of write as you uh, say. Excuse my chicken scratch on the screen. <laughs> About 30 more seconds. Anything else you notice, go ahead and put it in the chat. We have the AA, BAB rhyme scheme. <clears throat> and this is all within four bars, by the way, in the music, so. Sorry, that might have been super loud. I gotta get this frog out of my throat. <laughs> all right, three more seconds. All right, all right, all right. All right. So what, um, if we're looking at the rhyme for a second, what's the, uh, what are the, where are the rhymes at? So where are the rhyming words? So we also got the internal rhyme too. I'll write that in there. And then start uh, entering this. So we said, got money now, got money without it. So are we talking about, that's what we're saying here. So we got, hold on, where is it? Got money 
now. Hold on, I think I might have misinterpreted that. All right, so we've got money now. And then, and got without it, okay. All right, and then JJ Bing. Uh, what are some of the internal rhymes that you notice? Say the now. Well, I'll just keep it the same for now. I'm just gonna highlight all the rhymes. I won't do the multiple color thing just now. So now around. You say the. Where's the how? Okay. And then without. Okay. All right. So tell me how. Alright, so see if you can um, find some of the uh, about as well. Yeah, about's in there. Uh, see if you can find some of the uh, other rhymes. I'll put it this way. It, it, it could be a rhyme, but it could also just be a repetition of words. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, so like... I, right? Obviously, it's going to have the same sound because it's the same word. But from a sound, from like a musical perspective, it's like you you hear that same note repeat, right? You hear that same sound repeat. So see if you can find other words in there that are rhyming in the um, that aren't necessarily like the ones that jump out at you, right? Like. The repeating I doesn't jump out you as a, as a rhyme, but you know, technically it's the repetition of sound, so we can count it as a rhyme. Anything else you see in it? All right, smile. And then what's, what's the rhyme with smile? So a perfect smile, it's more appealing. So what will around? What would you pair a uh, smile with as far as the rhyming goes? And it might be, you know, some slant rhymes in there. So they tell me I should fix my grill. So, like, I'm noticing this right there. Like, I and my, their rhyme, right? That, that kind of creates um, the effect there. He says, smile, like how, okay, All right, so. So the smile that goes with the how, right? A perfect smile is more appealing, but it's appealing, but it's funny how. So here's another one that maybe you missed, right? Appealing and it's. Right, there's, there's the rhyme there as well, um, which also gets us to my, it's like, that's probably why he had the Kurtz, right? If, cause you think about sonically, uh, appeal and it's the, the more you kind of repeat the sound, the more musical, um, the more musical it sounds, right? Cause obviously you, you don't have to say, you know, my ish, right? You, you could say something my teeth, but teeth um, loses its sound, right? Um, losing that, that that repetitive sound, which gives takes away the song quality of it. Uh, then you said, um, and it also goes with fix, right? So fix from there. 